Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the types of glands. Now when I was defining gland, I told one thing that they produce and they secrete some chemical substances. There are two ways they can secrete them. One is they can secrete them directly into the blood. And the other way is they can secrete them on the apical surface of some cellular component. Now based on this, that whether they secrete it into the blood or they secrete it on the apical surface, glands are divided into two types. The first one which we are going to talk about is the exocrine glands. So what are exocrine glands? These glands secrete their products directly into the apical surface. Right? So they do not secrete their products into the blood. They secrete it into the apical surface. So apical surface means the plasma membrane, the inner surface of the plasma membrane of some cellular component. So here the glands directly reaches some of the cells. Right? So now how do they secrete their products into the apical surface? Some of the examples of exocrine glands, sweat glands, oil glands, salivary glands. These are some of the examples of exocrine glands. Now, how do they secrete? They have duct. Now, these exocrine glands are glands with duct. What are duct? Ducts are nothing but tube-like structures. So, these ducts actually connect them to body surfaces. So, now what happens is the gland maybe is located deep inside the body. But these glands have some tube-like structure which will actually connect it to some superficial surface. And that is how it will secrete its product onto the apical surface, on the superficial surfaces. Because it is connected to the surfaces with the help of the tube-like structures. Now let us try to understand the examples. Look at the example of sweat glands. So what happens in case of a sweat glands? So if you see here, if you look at this guy, the sweat is being observed on the skin. So on a superficial surface, we can see the sweat. But can you see the sweat glands? No, because the sweat glands are located deep inside. They are not located on the surface of our skin. So even though they are located deep inside, but they deposit their product on body surfaces. Right? So their products or their secretions can be seen on superficial surfaces. That is because wherever the sweat glands are located, they are connected to the body surface with the help of ducts. That is with the help of tube-like structures. So here you can look at the structure of sweat glands. So here you can see some tube-like structure. So these tube-like structures are the ducts. So you can see ducts. So these tube-like structures which you see, they are the ducts and these things which you see here, they are the glands. So these are your sweat glands and these are the tubes. So these tubes actually connect the sweat glands to the surface. So whenever they secrete the sweat, the sweat goes to the body surfaces with the help of these tubes. Right? Similarly, let us talk about the salivary glands. You know what is saliva? I'm sure all of you know by now. It is the watery substance which we generally see is present in our mouth cavity or the oral cavity. So inside your mouth, you always feel some watery substance which is present, right? So that is saliva. Now who secretes that saliva? It is secreted by the salivary glands. Now where are the salivary glands located? So here in this picture, you can see these three are the three salivary glands. The parotid gland, the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland. These are the three salivary glands. So even these salivary glands are located deep inside our skin but the secretion that is the saliva is seen in the oral cavity. So it is on the on a superficial surface. So that is also because they are connected to the oral cavity surface with the help of ducts or with the help of tube-like structures and that is why their secretions are seen on superficial surfaces. Now since, now why are these glands called exocrine glands? Exo means outside. The Generally the word exo means outside. External means outside. Right? So exo also means outside. 
that means their secretion is seen outside so it is on the surfaces so that is why they are called exocrine glands and these are the glands with ducts right so i am sure now by now you would have guessed that what is the second type of gland which we are going to talk about the second type of gland is the endocrine gland so i don't think i need to explain much in this because you would have understood what is going to be endocrine glands so these glands will secrete their products directly into the blood so they will not secrete it on the surfaces now why they do not secrete it on the surfaces because maybe they are not connected to the surfaces so if i say that they are not connected to the surfaces that means they maybe they do not have those tube like structures so they are missing the ducts and that is why they are called ductless glands because they do not have the ducts so these are the ductless glands connection lost with the body surfaces because they have no ducts so how do they exist they exist as isolated blocks of tissues like you you saw the picture for uh, this one um, in the previous slide i showed you the picture for sweat glands right so how how were they looking they were like a gland which is connected to with a tube like structure so that is how they exist but in case of endocrine glands that tube like structure or the duct is missing so they exist as bunch of tissues so isolated blocks of tissues that is how they exist and they produce some chemicals and they secrete them directly into the blood and then blood carries it to different parts of the body now that is why the name endocrine endo means inside that means they secrete their secretion is inside they do not secrete on the external body surfaces they secrete inside the blood some of the examples of endocrine glands are thyroid gland pituitary gland hypothalamus and pineal gland so these are some of the examples of endocrine glands i am sure that these names are quite new to you maybe you would have heard about thyroid but others would be new to you but in this lesson we are going to study about these endocrine glands because these are the glands which produce hormones and hormones are the substances which actually govern the endocrine system so endocrine system is composed of these endocrine glands and these endocrine glands produce some hormones and those hormones actually perform many important functions which help in the control and coordination of our body so that is what we will now talk about in detail so these endocrine glands as i said there are many endocrine glands which are present in the body of human beings so we will talk about all the endocrine glands we will also talk about the hormones which are secreted by each of those endocrine glands and what purpose they serve so here in this picture you can look at the some of the examples of endocrine glands the thyroid so where is the thyroid gland present it is present somewhere in the neck region right this is a thyroid gland the hypothalamus pineal gland and pituitary gland they are all present in the human brain see hypothalamus and pituitary are very near to each other and pineal gland is present almost in the center of the brain right so these are some of the examples of endocrine glands so all these glands secrete hormones and they secrete them directly into the blood so let us have a quick comparison between the endocrine and exocrine glands so what are endocrine glands they secrete chemical substances that is hormones that travel through blood to specific target organs of body okay and what about exocrine they secrete chemical substances that travel through tubes to the target organs so they are connected to their target organs which is generally the apical surfaces through tubes so the endocrine glands are called ductless glands because they do not have the tube like structures on the other hand exocrine glands are the glands with ducts examples of endocrine glands include pineal gland thyroid gland on the other hand salivary glands sweat glands are some of the examples of exocrine glands so with this i think your idea about glands the types of glands what are endocrine glands all these things would have become clear so now thank you
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.